Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the September 18th meeting of the Stackbridge Assessors. Mike, what do you have for us today? Good morning. Um, last meeting minutes, we discussed pretty much everything that's on here, so everything's a carryover. Um, number two, the CP1 form on Gateway, that was due on September 15th, and that, that form is the Community Preservation Act form, um, which has to be filed every year. Basically, it's just how much did we commit to the tax collector for the total collected um, for community preservation funds, and then how much did we abate? You know, we do an adjustment if there's an abatement or an exemption on the uh, parcel that has the the CP the CPC fund on it fee, and that has to be checked with Cheryl, our accountant. So she checked it; it was fine, and she submitted it. So we're legal on that form as of for September fifteenth. That that is really like our first form we submit for the the fiscal year oh, that one's okay um number three la4 uh, the la4 is a recap of all of our totals broken down by class and that gets submitted with the la13 so that's ready to be submitted and i need at least two signatures from the board of assessors so after this is done you know we can do that down in the office that along with, um, well, I wanted to get into the LA-13 a little bit. The, the LA-13 is our new growth form for the year. And I had mentioned at our last meeting that we we were, I was planning on submitting a number that was a lot higher than we typically submit. And we had talked about how many new houses and things like that. Well, I have the final number on that. Somewhere. <laughs> well, I know what it is. It's um, 144,000, which is the highest we have ever submitted. It was 85,000 last year, and that was high. So that is a combination. Here it is. And that's not it. Um, so the, anyway, I know that number. It's 144,000. That is ta that's tax dollars. That's tax dollars. Right? Yes, it's 15 million in valuation which is, again, the highest we have ever submitted. That won't go without um, a red flag warning at the DOR for sure. Um, and, and so the last time we talked about it, I didn't have the exact number, but I have the breakdown now. Um, 15 new houses, but not all of them have full values. Six of them have partial values, which means we'll be picking up the remainder, if the houses are done on January 1st, we'll be picking up the remainder of those values for fiscal year 25. But again, that's the most we have ever had in, in one fiscal year. And there's the way that we submit it with proof is I had this is just my my rough draft, but the DOR and I don't know if you knew this, Brandy, the DOR shows a new template this year for submission. Last year, there was a template that everyone loved. They changed it again. And it's the one that you used last year, which gave you the breakdown of all the class totals on the side of the spreadsheet, it's a huge spreadsheet. That's now gone. And they, they let you use that as a backup to what you submit so you know your numbers match. All it is now is that they call it the simplified. It's basically everything except for that big chunk over here that does all the totals. The totals are gone. So when you're entering it, you don't actually see how much is going into each class. So. You just have to double check to make sure that when you submit it, which is a, a whole new process, you have to actually grab the, the file as an upload and then they'll send you an email when they've processed the upload on your LA 13. That's different this year. Kind of like when you submit your sales, it's pretty much the same procedure. So I have all the backup um, that I've, I've typed it in already. It's just a matter of uploading it. But I, I just know there's gonna be like, whoa, where did this come from? You know, but again, it's right here, you know, whether someone did an addition, new house, garage, finished a basement, put a deck on, a sunroom. I have all of it typed out here. And if and if um, Joe at the DOR, our field advisor, who also does our sales, if he wants to see the record cards, I've got stacks of them with the old value, the new value, what they did, the sketch, the photo. And again, it's it's their job to question something like that. I mean, that's a and 15 million in a 
small town. That's pretty good. I said that will it sustain that way going forward? I, I don't know. I mean, it could, this could be we've always hovered between 65 and 80. So to go from 85 last year to basically 144, it's not something that because Stockbridge doesn't really use that number because we have such a huge levy capacity. It, you know, if, if that was a number that was submitted in a, in a community that was right up to their, you know, their ceiling or close to being that way, then you would be in trouble, you know, because there's no, you know, for us, we don't, we could pick up 10 million in value. It's not going to matter. You know I mean? It, it's just going to, it's a, it's a procedure that we have to go through to get the tax rate when we're doing our valuations. And when I'm doing the inspections, you know, I try to list everything that, you know, we can possibly list. I mean, we're not picking up doll houses or anything like that, but we're picking up everything that the permits have listed. And this just happens to be a banner year, record year for building permits. And I mean, it's a good sign that is definitely um, something to, you know, basically say we're doing well as far as, I don't know how long some of these will stay as far as getting the properties done. Cause when I was at the property, there was a lot of issues with getting materials and finishing pro you know, projects. So we may see some of these go into like maybe two fiscal years, but again, we'll still pick up partial values every year. Will it be 144,000 in new taxes next year? I doubt it, but who knows? We may be there. So Mike mentioned that there's six partials, new homes. Yes. What would we have last year? Something similar, maybe like yeah. There's it, that number always hovers around the same amount. We're always adding a few new ones and finishing off the ones that you know we're hovering past the Jan January first um, assessment date. But to have fifteen total, where some are full value and some are partial value, that is a record. I mean, I've been here for twenty eight years. We've never had that many. So again, that is for a small town in the population of Stockbridge, I consider that a substantial number. I mean, typically, you know, we have like three or four that we're picking up that I'm going to look at. This was a huge amount. I mean, if you had seen the step, cause I print out all of the plans from the um, building department, they used to give them to us the rolled up maps and the stack that, I, I mean, the stacks that I had this year of printed plans was just outrageous. Outrageous in a good way, though. I mean, new growth is, you know, something that we should be picking up as much as we can. So that will, that requires just my signature to submit. And the form actually will look like this. This is last year. This is when I, this is the spreadsheet. Like, here's, it keeps your running total. That's now gone this year. So all you're submitting is your runoff with no totals. It will tell you the total once you submit it, which I don't like, but you got to do what they, they tell you to do on the gateway. And again, I have this new breakdown for fiscal year 24 with, if you guys ever wanna see specifically what amount is being picked up, how much is being carried over. This also lists, I mean, it's not just the um, houses. This is also new growth on the utility companies. Remember the three appraisals that are done, you know, that brought in new growth, which could possibly be contested by not only the DOR, but the actual um, companies themselves. This is the wi the wireless valuations that we come up with ourselves. Not a lot of new growth there because most most of the places have already converted from 4G to 5G for their you know their machinery and equipment. So there's not a lot of new value picked up there. It's new businesses again, not a lot. All the new second homeowners. So anyone that is an official second homeowner that's being taxed for their furnishings, those are considered new growth as well. So those are all on, on this list. And any items that a existing business list as new is considered new growth, that's on this list as well. So those are what make up the LA-13, which I plan on submitting this and the LA-4 on Wednesday. Which brings us to another submission, which is the LA, LA3 submission on the gateway and the ENCODE backup. We've talked about this um, over the last few, actually basically over the summer. These are 
our sales. This is what's going to make up the new valuations that is also going to Joe Barberi. He will review those first. I submit everything together. I submit the new growth, the sales, and the and the um, coded out sales backup, which I call the ENCODE backup, all together. He'll get to the LA3 and certify our sales, which is basically certifying our values. Once that's done, he'll be, you know, he'll say, okay, let's get right into the new growth. Let's get your LA4 and your LA13 done. Once all that is approved, we then can start working on the classification hearing, which it hasn't been officially, pen I mean, I guess it's been penciled in, but um, I've talked to Mike Canales and, you know, they, they're hoping that we can have our classification hearing, this, this be the selectman, like the second week in October. I'm hoping that as well. But again, I've mentioned to him that once I submit this this week, I don't get to dictate when the DOR gets to look at this. They, if, they, if Joe has um, 10 or even a few revals that he's working on, which is a, you know, those will get priority before a um, semi-annual community that's not in a reval will get his attention. So I'm hoping maybe by the end of the week we hear something, but that's wishful thinking. Uh, definitely next week we'll hear something. And then we, we're we actually meeting tomorrow, um, myself, Mike, Erica, and Cheryl, our tax collector and our accountant, to start working on the tax rate. This is, we can start getting preliminary things ready for that. And our next meeting, I didn't put it on the agenda, but I will just mention it in the, in the talks of the tax rate. We should talk about the overlay amount because that's going to have to be um, ready to go. I'll mention, I'll mention it tomorrow that we're, we're going to be looking into that. That will be the first weekend in October. We will not be submitting our tax rate that early. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping we can, but again, it's, it is out of my control. I can't just pick up the phone and say, hey, can you hurry this up? That is not within, in my realm of power to do that. I wish it was. So I think we're looking really, really good and moving forward. I don't want to give an indi early indication of where the tax rate's going to be. We'll have a better idea tomorrow. I, I haven't received the local receipts. I, I haven't even looked at the cherry sheets that have come through yet for the, for the local aid, which is pretty much hovers around what we get every year. So the receipts are going to be everything. Where where do we stand and what do we take in and what are they going to what are we going to be allowed to use for estimated receipts which will lower the tax rate. I will say our valuations as a whole and I mentioned this at the last um, meeting between fiscal year 23 and fiscal year 24 as a total and this isn't residential class it's a total is 128 million over last year that is going to and if you go into the la4 right now on gateway it says it throws up kind of you know how you see that little toxic box it's only a warning it's not a you can't certify your values they give you a warning if your valuations as a whole are 10 percent or higher than the previous year of which they are i'm sure you've seen it brandy ours goes ours was has been that way for three years it's not an alarm. I mean, it's just basically saying you increased your values by more than 10%. Well, the sales, the sales you, have dictated that, not does me. Does it make you write anything? Like when you do the revenue part, the estimated, if it's a percentage over last year's, we have... We have well, that, that, the 10% is just the values on the LA4. They will absolutely, if, you, if we're going to have the actual and the estimate be a lot higher than the actual they're going to look for an explanation that we'll talk about that tomorrow. That's going to be something that Cheryl is going to have to be on top of, which she usually is. And it, tomorrow's meeting is just about lining up everything. So we know, you know, are we, you know, are the books balanced? Can we, do we have those numbers ready to start working on the tax rate? Because once this stuff gets certified on our end, it's a race to the finish. We, we no longer have to submit anything to the Berkshire Eagle about our classification hearing. All we have to do is follow the guidelines that are put in place for posting a meeting. So if we find out the, you know, Wednesday before the selectmen's meeting the next week, we could submit 
just submit uh, you know that it's going to be on the agenda and we could have that tax classification here it would be awesome if we could have it the second week in october and have bills out before november 1st because remember last year we didn't get bills out until the two weeks before christmas we do not that was reval and that was a lot of other issues and with the classification and things that were going on with that we should not have any issues with that this time around We're basically in a regular year but there can always be little snags, you know, going forward. And I would hope that when we're working on the tax rate, all of us allow that to go as low as it possibly can go. Because there are going to be some big jumps in value once again. And last year we were able to tame that by having the tax rate go down by over, what was it, dollar, dollar thirty two last year. I'm, I would assume with that amount of value being added and the budget still being pretty close, um, it's a little bit higher, but again, the receipts, if the receipts come in where they came in last year, we're gonna see a tax rate close to the dip that we had last year, and that would be wonderful. But I won't give anything official until the tax classification hearing is scheduled and we get the packet ready for the select board the weekend before. Mike, you, you mentioned Gateway a few times. You want mm -hmm. to say what Gateway is? Gateway is actually the link between the municipalities and the Department of Revenue. Basically, they don't want to see paper sent to them. They, you know, we've, we haven't faxed things to the DOR in years. Everything, your new growth, your you know, going all the way back to the community, community preservation funds, uh, everything is put in electronically and signed electronically we print out everything keep it on record and they can immediately the dor can immediately see okay the board of assessors in um otis the board of assessors in stockbridge have just submitted their <clears throat> la4 we'll give them a timeline of when we're going to start looking at this and they can see things in real time just like that once we submit it gets locked and if we want to make a change, we need permission from the DOR to do that. And if they see something wrong, they will come back and say, we're going to unlock your, your forms. And we go through this on a daily basis when we're not so much with what I'm submitting from the assessor side, but the tax rate portion of it, the, the multiple forms that you guys have to sign and we have to submit, we will go back and forth with submission on those, opening the forms, closing the forms all to get to the final letter that gets sent out that says the town of Stockbridge has, you know, your, your tax rate has been set. And even everything with the tax rate is submitted. If you've got a, ba a backup piece of paper that needs to be submitted, there's a, an option to upload documents. So they get to see everything in real time, electronic. I think it's the best thing that's ever happened. I absolutely love it. We were one of the towns that were using it before other people were. And you still have a paper trail, but you also have something that's also open to the public. Once this is all certified, and I'm not sure the public knows this, but you can actually search sales many, many years back. You can do statistical work on there if you wanted to see all the tax rates and other you know, communities in Massachusetts. That's all available for people to look at. It's a great tool. It's nice for comparing too, because you can go into whatever you're looking at sales or free cash or whatever and click this year next you know the year before the year yes. before and just go and i use it as a as an indication cuz you you have a drop down menu it's always on your most current fiscal year that you're submitting but if like the new growth if i immediately want to see what was it you know in fiscal 23 or 22 there's a drop down menu with every fiscal year listed and you can then print that report you can do a pdf and send it to someone I think it's a great tool for anybody to use finance committee select board any boards that want to look up statistical information on our valuations any realtors appraisers that want to look up sales that's where you should go I mean, that, I mean you can call us and we can show you how to do it but it's it is a great tool so do we have that uh, hyperlink on our website right now I don't know if we have the link to gateway you have to log into gateway but there's a separate section and it was at our last, uh, I can find it. it. There is a link within the DOR's website for the public to look at. Ours is, I set up um, the accounts, like you guys all have your own separate accounts. And those are set up so you can go in and sign documents and some people can sign and submit. We can't allow that, those 
passwords and things to be out there, but there is a public version, which is actually not just gateway. It is just more of a statistical tool. And I have, we, there, the last Berkshire County Assessors Association meeting we had in the spring, we had a speaker there from the DOR that showed, you know, so I've got pamphlets and stuff on how to do that. So we can look into that. And I, in the next meeting that we have with the Berkshire County Assessor Association on the 25th of October, we're most likely gonna be reviewing those types of things again. We're trying to come up with the final agenda we met last week. So there might be someone from the DOR to speak about that and to speak about exemptions. Kathleen Caleri might be there to talk about exemptions. I didn't know Brandy if you were gonna go or the new yeah, person like in the assessors. I wanna get, yeah. I was thinking of going. But it, it's yeah. going to be um, at the Greenwich Country Club. So number six, we had talked about this at maybe two meetings ago. We are entering the um, Beechwood Lundstock fee for the maintenance of the roads. And we were testing it the last time. We we're just in the beginning stages of testing it and see who was on what end it was going to happen. Was it going to be the assessors that entered this information? It was going to be the collectors side on soft rate, which is our tax billing um, program. We're done with it. We actually, um, I put, I called vision. There was a section in the, in the software that I thought, oh, this would be perfect to type in a code. And I thought, you know, BLF, Beachwood Lenstock fee would be perfect to put in. Come to find out, the district code where we were going to enter it doesn't really exist. It's an old code that just happens to be on our record layout, but nobody uses it. So Vision came up with the idea. They're like, you've got 10 fields on your software that are user definable. You're using five of them. Why don't you, or you're using four of them. Why don't you use the fifth one to enter whatever you want to get this Beachwood Lenstock fee transferred over when you do your record layout to the tax collector? So I, they did, they created a field. And if you go into the camera system now, it actually says as a field in vision, Beachwood Lenstock. So I can go in there and type whatever I want. So I did type the three digit uh, or the three letters. Eric, I, I ran a, a, a test tax bill file, just like we'll be doing in a few weeks. Erica got it, she sent it to Softrite. And last week she informed me that everything is ready to go, all of the, um, fees have been put in and balanced. So those will indeed be appearing on the tax bills for fiscal year um, 23. And I believe she also put, I think I told you this, Brandy, I haven't looked yet. It's on the website okay. because we will be getting phone calls. I mean, this is something that if you are part of the Beachwood Lenstock Association and you, and you have been volunteering a pay or paying from a bill that they were that um, the Beachwood Lundstock group was sending you that is now going to be on your tax bill there will not be a separate bill coming it's it will appear as a $500 charge on your tax bill first half coming in a few months so Michael and that could be that you know we're we're just the in between we don't we didn't come up with the fee we are not abating the fee it is something that if a new owner or an, or an existing owner is going to question, if they go to the website, it explains um, what, the, what was done at the town meeting. And it actually, I believe it had to go through the state in order for it to be affected. And um, we're just handling the billing side of it. That's all. So this will not affect our overlay account? So no, no, this is, this is an actual additional fee. So on top of your tax bill, you're going to see a line item on the tax bill that will say, I don't know the exact wording, I, I haven't seen the bill, it will say Beachwood Lenstock fee, $500 to a, every eligible parcel that's within this group. If you don't know that you're in that group, I believe you can get on the website and there's information on contacting, you know, this is something that has to get paid with your, it's an additional charge on your tax bill. I think there's around... I think it was around $60,000 that's uh, going to be collected from this. And does it say on there, like Gary brought up last time, if they don't pay it, does we get our taxes first and then that is outstanding? She's going to be including a, a little, you know, piece of paper in there that explains it okay. and what to do. Because again, we don't, we will not be handling abatements. We're handling the 
assessing side of it. When we're not even really handling the assessing side of it. There's no value associated on our end. And I made sure that, you know, we're not going to get involved in putting in fees on a appraisal system. It's a, an appraisal system is a valuation system. It is not a tax system. So, you know, hence the reason we also don't enter the exemptions or the abatements on our end. We do it in paper form and they're processed through the tax collector. Taxes are the tax collector. Valuation is the, you know, you, it's basically a betterment, you know, I mean, it's being treated that way. So I'm not 100% positive if that fee has to get paid first, that would definitely, that would be a legitimate question that Erica can definitely answer within her responsibilities. But anything else that involves, you know, why was I taxed for this? I'm not contributing to this. That would be a question for the association. Mm -hmm. And, you know, going for, I don't believe they're going to have a meeting every year voting this in. It's in. It's legal. And we now are just carrying through what the town of Stockbridge said we would do for them. It's just an easier way of collecting the, the fees for even the new owners, you know, there probably should be something at every closing. I'm not going to tell lawyers what to do, but there probably should be something that they start disclosing saying, oh, by the way, in addition to your taxes, there's an additional charge of $500. Of $500. Yeah. Yeah, It'd be like an HOA. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's, not, it's more than an HOA. It's a betterment mm -hmm. that's collected by the town. Right. And theoretically, if, the, if you do not pay... We're just going to hold that money for will them. Will the town process a taking... If the betterment isn't paid, do we know? Again, that would be a question for Erica. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. It's possible. I mean, it, it, I don't know how. I think I, I'm not 100%. Well, and that's the thing is, I wonder, I wonder what's going to happen with like the municipal lien certificate. So if someone's only been paying yeah, that's true. And, and will it show up on the municipal lien certificate and you won't be able to convey your land or your property. That's true too. Yeah. Those are, those are things that probably should be addressed in the little, you know, blip that's going to be, I mean, the tax bill is it's jam packed. Now I don't know how much you can fit in there other than here's the fee, you know, but the whole point of Stockbridge getting involved in this was we were just going to be the go-between because they weren't getting the money from but, the taxpayers, you know? And again, I get it, but I was concerned right up front, like who's doing what here? You know, we did our part. I don't know what else is so, on there and that they have to do. So this board did not vote on this. We were not given the opportunity to vote. It was at town. No, this has the board. The, this is it's at town meeting. And then last summer, was it last summer? There was a separate meeting here where the actual people that are paying these fees, they had to vote on it. We just hosted that meeting here. Again, we've, we've just been the host in all of this. This is something that they came up with that they wanted to do. And it was, I don't know who suggested that the town of Stockbridge be the one to you know, administer this, but it happened. And they needed the people to vote this through. I don't know how many showed up at this meeting. It was, it, I, it was again, it wasn't even a, it wasn't open to the public. It was just open to, these taxpayers that are paying this fee, if they didn't show up for it to vote for it, it would not have gone through, even though it was at the town meeting. But they did and they got enough. So we just had to, you know, go along with it. I think it's one of those things like we'll figure it out. We'll we'll see what happens in the first year. But as far as the complaining about the fee, I mean that's really not Stockbridge's thing. You know, I mean we're we're not going to tell people what they can and can't do as far as, well, don't pay it or don't, you know, it's, you need to talk to your association about this. They wanted this, they got it, we implemented it. And again, I, I have you seen the website? Did, did you go, because you were questioning? I didn't check yet, because. Because Erica said, you know, it's on there if they question it. So I'll, I'm going to look at it. But the technical side of it, I don't know about that part of it. And the town collects a fee for helping assist mm -hmm. in this process? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Because the town meeting the town vote free. was to go for special legislation to do this. So that's why I wanted to see the special legislation. But that's what Mike <laughs> said she's going to no post hand. on the website. Sure. 
Yeah, I, for some reason, I thought we heard that there was. Something. I thought there was going to be an uh, administrative deal I mean, somehow, but it didn't come back to me. Yeah. <laughs> I put it in again. I'm not. I'm not complaining. It honestly did not take me long. I just. I was more concerned about how the heck do we get this into our camera system. And once that took place, I'm like, you know what? Instead of putting one or two in and then sending a file over. I'm just going to type them all in see something on the turnover side. Like when we collect it all and we turn it over to them, we might keep 3% or something. That's true. That might exactly. They could do that kind of like a CPA. We have that administrative fee in there that we collect. I don't know who gets it, um, but. So, so Michael, you mentioned that in our system, there's a fifth field that you use. Mm -hmm. So that field can be used for other entities as well. So if you used a code of, be Berkshire Lenstock. Yep. Uh, so if there's a another association up around the lake that starts doing this, oh yeah, they could put in. It's in that same field. You're not going to have to use the sixth field, the seventh field, the eighth field. No, it'll be in the uh, same fifth same field. field. Right. Mm -hmm. Just a different. Yeah, it was one of those things. Like they were like, hmm. Why don't you just use your user defined fields? Because if you look at the record layout for when we do the tax bills, I only look at the things that we print on the bill. There literally are 10 user, user defined field, user defined field. Like, what are these? You know, I mean, I know what they were, but because we we're using them now for our GIS number that you have to have in place, the coordinates for uh, when you submit your sales, the DOR wants to be able to look up using the longitude and latitude, where the hell are these properties? So you have to now submit with every single sale on the sales report, they want to see the coordinate so they can go right to these properties, which I think is great. So we are already using that. We're using the our old map and lot number when we when we do did a conversion, that's in there too, which I still refer back to those old numbers if someone's questioning, you know, where that where such and such was years ago. But yeah, so we could we could go for it. Again, if for a split second, I thought, well, wouldn't it be easier for me to just put the $500 fee in here? And I said, no, let's just put a code that everyone's aware of. And she may even just print that code also on the on the bill. I've yet to see what that printed bill is, is going to look like. But we've done water liens before. We've done, you know, um, a betterment in place. My concern is as soon as we run the commitment, we're, we're going to have to commit that amount because it's on the tax bill. So there'll be a separate, like right after the CPA charge, we'll have to commit that amount, or actually I'll have to find that out as well. It's gonna be on the commitment. They're gonna print that total amount, 60,000, because the water, the water liens have always been committed to the tax collector. If there was a sewer lien, those would be committed as well. So we'll just have to add a separate, that's easy to do. I can do it on the warrant for, for that amount. And it has to equal, I believe it's 60,500 is the total amount. And again, so this is a test phase. When we send that first bill out, we'll understand. She may even have a form now, cause she's, Erica is great with getting the lawyers to give us the PO box numbers and the addresses because they keep forgetting them or not putting them on the deed. So she's got now this, uh, you know, link with all of them that we never had before. It might be something that she might be able to do also is to tell them in advance, oh, you're in that Beachwood Lenstock area, have a listing, send it just the listing to all the lawyers so they can inform their clients at the sale. You know, we, this brings up another thing, you know, what we've already had happen because a lot of them don't understand how our billing works on a fiscal year. We've had some people call it an HOA fee and wanting us to um, split it up because of the sale date. And I absolutely said to Erica, we don't do that. We don't do it for taxes. We are not doing it for a $500 fee. Because you didn't collect it either. That's right. But you didn't collect They're it. They're already so assuming it. And it's like, we haven't even done it yet. The first billing will include it. So I can just see when we get to the second half billing, and that property, let's say it didn't get paid. There could be definitely some snags on this. It didn't get paid and now there's a new owner and they're thinking, well, I didn't own it last year. That's the previous owner's amount. Yeah. We'll find it. There, there, there will be yeah, uh, they, things they, that happen. They should be able to clean it up with the HUD settlement form. Totally. Just, just to say, you know what, if it was yep. six months. I mean, it's $500. We're not talking thousands, but again, something we've had questions over our small personal property, $30 bill. So, I mean, there could be 
issues with a five hundred dollar fee that is now on your property for life. And it's on a property card for life. Yeah, it's on our. It will be on our record, and it's it's one of those things that it goes with the owner. Well, that's what I'm saying. So yeah, I will never touch it unless okay. someone's unless um, I don't know how you drop out of this association. You can't. But I also don't know if they would ever expand that. Uh, and I don't know if you can do that either. So whatever's there at this point, you're pretty much going to be getting it, no matter who the owner is. It's just going to be there. But the first year is always the test year. And, you know, we kind of went into this. There's not a lot of other communities that do this. I think Eric had found one other community that used the district code. And again, that they're on the old version six of vision. We're on version eight. There's no such thing as that anymore. Everything is user defined and that's what just, we're Just be using. prepared. It's going to grow. Oh, you mean for other associations? Yeah. We thought that as well. Mostly, I mean, you know, as long as it's not condominium associations. Want to <laughs> I know it's Some true. It, you're right. I hear you. The price of the transfer station on the bill. So we wanted, I wanted to see the legislation to see what it looks like. Oh, you mean the fee on there? The fee? Yeah. So that it's right in with the tax bills. See, yeah, it could be something like that. You're right. It can open up right. things for good or bad. It's a slippery slope. You it's, can, you'd be collecting condo fees here. Pretty soon. Yeah. yeah, and we can only, I mean, like I said, that bill is only so big to include things and, and flyers and everything else. I mean, it will get, it can get very complicated and, you know, especially to the elderly, you know, like, what is this? You know, I've never had this before. And also, as far as... It could impact your um, abatements, too, because if, say, it hits the fee first and not the taxes and they don't realize, and then they go to file an abatement and they didn't pay their taxes. Or an appellate tax board filing. Mm -hmm where you have to send the amount of taxes that were paid. That, that as well, I, I'm thinking it's separate because the ATB, you have to pay that first half yeah. amount before you file, legally can, can file. So they're gonna have to be aware that, look, that $500 is something separate. If they choose not to pay it, they still paid, maybe this could be a snag, you know I mean? It's so new. I don't know. You know. Again, once there's a reason. Why, once it's out there, there's a reason why. I know. Other, there's a reason why one other community hasn't done, done this. I mean, there's only two of us now, so it's. Yeah, it can. It can, like you said, there could be so many other things. That, like, oh, wait a minute, you know. And by me saying there's ten user defined fields, I mean, you know, who knows? In ten years from now, those could all be filled up with different things, depending on what the state also requires you to do. So I mean, so if they don't pay their five hundred dollar fee. They can still go to the, AB, uh, the appellate tax board. Yeah, because the the um, they're going to be separate taxes, where they're going to be sep they're going to be submitted separately. It's kind of like the the um, the CPA charge as well. I mean, that is list that has to be listed separately and committed separately. If it's committed separately, away from that total amount that's determined from your valuation, ATB is fine. They don't. They only call me later and say. Hey, don't you guys have that CPA thing in your community? Okay, give them this adjustment because we're giving them this abatement. They know that they're separated, but again, we're not. If we were to go to ATB on this next year, we will. I will immediately tell them. Look, when you look at that bill, because we have to provide a copy of the bill, that fee has nothing to do with what the what was determined from the valuation. So I'll make it very clear to them. But I'm with you guys. I think this might be. Yeah, something that might bring up things that we're not even thinking of right now. It was a it was a kind gesture to do this, but it could open up a can of worms. Yeah. Tax consequences. A lot of people when they submit their bills yep. for escrow. tax. I mean, it could be a they, it, yeah, it, escrow. It could There's be just, a dollar charge if someone questions. I mean, that is you know, if I get a bill in the mail and all of a sudden I'm used to seeing something and then I see this, I get the reason behind it. I do, but. Yes, there will be questions. I, I wouldn't, you know, expect anything less as, as uh, you know, what is this fee? Why are we getting this? And if we're collecting it, someone here should be able to explain it. And I don't mean get into it as far as abatements, but I mean, this is what we did. This is how we're billing it. And it's it's not going to be broken up 250 on one half and 250 on the other. That 500 has to be paid within the first half bill. It's not going to be broken up. 
So we'll, there'll be more conversation about that, um, I'm sure, going forward. Number seven, since we're getting close to doing the tax bills, um, I need to order supplies for the commitment book. So um, we haven't ordered really anything yet out of fiscal 24's budget. So I have to do that. And that's, <clears throat> is there anyone tuned in? Nope. Okay, that's all I have. How about the next day to the next meeting? Um, the second? Yeah, that will be a must because that will, we, we have to go over the overlay. We'll be that much closer knowing when the classification hearing is gonna be happening. And no executive session? No. Anybody have anything that they want to? No. Uh, okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. All those in favor? Oh, second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.